Hello and welcome to episode 101 of my podcast all about knitting and crochet and my yarn shop here in Wiesbaden, Germany. I'm Kiko and today is June 28th, 2021. Today when I was looking at what to wear, I um, found three red tops that I haven't shown on the video before and two of them I haven't made myself but they were given to me um, and this one, which I have crocheted myself. And um, when I started podcasting, I tried to go through everything that I have made um, to show on the podcast. And only after I'd shown everything that I made, I, I started wearing the things that were given to me that other people have made. Um, but for some reason, I missed this top. <laughs> so um, yeah, and as I said, this is red and there's two other red things that I haven't shown before. So I'll be wearing more red in the future. Um, yeah, but I usually start with the accessory. And today I'm showing a shawl that I have shown before. And it's a mix of knitting and crochet. It's out of a very nice book um, that I forgot to bring. <laughs> um, and you can make this kind of design with leftover yarns, which is what I did in a blue green version that I um, have also shown on the podcast before um, but this is my black and silver version but these weren't leftover yarns but most of the yarns in this shawl I actually bought but they were usually single skeins that I picked up here and there or on a sale or something and whenever it was black or silver or a mix of both or some glitter in it I just picked it up and then I put together this um, interesting shawl um, yeah so as I said it's it's a mix of materials a mix of patterns and even a mix of techniques as it has both knit and crochet in it and um, I like it a lot yeah and this is the crochet top that I for some reason haven't shown on the podcast before it's out of one of the Japanese um, pattern magazines that I have and on my special video that Oh, I think I did them in both languages. On the special video with the books, um, I show this this magazine, and I think I even show this um, this pattern. And this is what it looks like. And basically, you start crocheting two um, circles. So the front and the back are exactly the same. And the only thing that I changed, I think, is um, in the pattern you have. I'm just wondering whether the front and back are really exactly the same but I do think so so you you um, crochet those two circles and then you crochet those bits um, to create your neckline and to sort of square it off and then you're supposed to do the same down here so you're supposed to crochet a, this corner and this corner and the same on the back but I didn't like it and I quite like the way um, the lower hem is rounded like this and I was also a bit worried that if I made it into squares it might get too tight over my hips and I really like the way it sort of falls open and um, yeah and then the the circles are connected connected at the sides and then you do a bit of a um, little pattern that you crochet around the edges and I did that around this round edge instead of the straight edge that I was supposed um, to create on the bottom of the top. Um, the top took me a long time to crochet. I think I crocheted around three or four years, not the whole time, but on and off. And the reason is that the yarn I used, I, I like the look of it, I like um, the feel of it and the drape and everything, but it was not uh, nice to work with. It's, um, it was a Lana Grossa yarn, um, it's fairly old, I don't think you can get it anymore, but it was very splitty, so my crochet hook would split the yarn so often, and then especially with these um, triple crochets and stuff that, that are in the pattern, and you had lots of yarn overs on your needle, it made it really difficult to work the yarn, so I... Um, had started at some point I'd started the first um, round the first circle and I think somewhere 
before it was done, when, when the pattern just repeats, I put it to the side and I wasn't quite sure whether I was going to finish it. But then a few years later, I picked it up and I decided I wanted to have the finished object. So I just, um, yeah, kept working on it until it was done. And now that I have it, I really like it. I still have more of the yarn. I think I have it in black as well. And um, maybe even another color, I'm not sure. But I couldn't really um, get myself to working with it again. I'm not sure whether it would be easier if I knit it instead of crocheting it, but we'll see. Maybe someday. If I do work with it, you'll know about it. <laughs> yeah, so that's what I'm wearing today. Then on, no, before I talk about the stuff that I am working on currently or I have just finished, I want to show you something that I finished a while ago. A while ago, I think it was last year, last summer, I knit this top, the pattern is called Gemini or Gemini, Gemini I think in English. Um, it's a pattern on knitty.com, it's a free pattern and the, um, the special thing about this pattern is that one side looks like this and the other looks like this. So you have two different sides that you can um, wear. The neckline is the same so you can wear this as the front or this and it's like you have two different tops in one. I used two different colors of the Catania cotton yarn. Um, which is not in the pattern, the pattern just uses one color. Um, and when I finished it, the neckline did not have this little border. So the, the pattern as it is written, you just start knitting and then you leave the edge without doing anything to it. And when I finished knitting it and the first one or two times that I wore it, I thought it was quite fine and then but every time I washed it, it seemed the neckline grew a little bit. And so the last time I wore it, the shoulders just kept uh, falling off my shoulders. The neckline was so wide. So I decided I didn't like that. So um, before I washed it again, I crocheted around the neckline. So now the neckline is fairly small. And I'm a bit worried that it might be too small. But I decided I'm going to wear it. Um, and see how I like it and then I'll either leave it that way or I might undo the last round of crochet and um, and do another row without decreases because what I did is I just crocheted into every stitch for the first round that I did and then I added a second round with decreases and then I added a third round and I put in some more decreases because after the second row it did feel a bit too wide still um, but then with the third round the first time I did it it was there were too many decreases so I ended up um, having like these folds because it was decreasing so much so I undid it I did it again with fewer decreases and I think it's quite okay now so if I compare the two tops it seems to be like the same kind of neckline as this one so it should be okay but I was thinking if the weather stays the same I just might wear this top next week on the podcast and you can have a look at the neckline and then we can decide together <laughs> whether or not it stays that way or whether I'm going to undo it again. Yeah I just wanted to let you know that even when projects are finished and you've worn them you can still change them that's one of the great things about making your own clothes you can always change things again if either the clothes change or you yourself change. <laughs> this time it was the top that changed. Okay, now on to my finished object. I have one finished object this week and one new project. So I'm staying on the same level with my number of projects, but it's a huge project that I finished and it's only a little one that I started. So without further ado, this is the dinosaur blanket and I, did five rounds of crochet around it. I'm really happy with the way it looks. I put all the pieces together. I think I had already done that last week. And every one of the little dinosaurs has its three little horns. So I'll try and show you everything, but I can't fit it on the screen at the same time. So I'll have to show you in pieces. So these are the lower three. Then it's these three, and now we have the beautiful red one, 
I didn't have more red yarn, that's why it's where there's only one red dinosaur. And then this one, and then the last three are these. And I'm really, really happy. And the blanket came out a lot bigger than I thought it would. I um, tried to put the pieces together and measure stuff. And I always have a hard time doing that. So the blanket is about as tall as I am. Maybe even a little taller. And it's fairly wide. And even though the recipient is still quite small. But I think he can grow quite a bit and still use this blanket and I really hope he'll be happy and I especially hope that we can find um, yeah that we can like, arrange a meeting as soon as possible so I can hand it over yeah that's my finished object of the day yeah then on to works in progress and as usual I'll start with the socks I finished it's only a half finished object but I finished my first sweet rose number two sock except for the embroidery I'll do that once I finish both the socks but now you can see that um, this bit is a bit higher than the pattern calls for and I only did one of those I like to call them frames because they they to me they seem like picture frames around the rose that I'm going to embroider inside so there's four of these fields so I'm going to embroider four roses and then I did the ribbing or the cuff the way it's written in the pattern with this beautiful leaf motif in between and I did the same cast off that's in the pattern that I really like the way it um, creates this, this tiny little ruffle on the top edge and I started knitting the second sock as usual and I finished all the toe increases and um, I think I've knit the first row of the pattern so that I can now just keep knitting. The pattern on the foot is, is fairly simple. So um, as this is the fourth sock that I'm knitting with this pattern, I know it by heart, I can just knit um, along and then I only, um, the next time I'll have to look at the pattern will be when I, um, hit the heel and even though this is going to be the fourth time I'm knitting this heel I cannot do that by heart <laughs> I still have to look at the numbers and then once I get started there's bits in between that I can work on my own but um, the transition rows and stuff I don't know them by heart yet so I don't think this is going to um, become my favorite heel just because it's not easy to remember I think um, I think you know that my favorite heel is the Fish Lips Kiss heel or the, um, I think it's called German Short Row heel. Um, they're both very easy to remember. So those are the ones that I usually go for if I'm not knitting to a certain pattern. Yeah, so these are the Sweet Rose number two socks. And then I added a little bit onto the blue stockings, um, the Elizabeth Montague socks by... Kate Davies. Um, I had finished the foot, I would finished the complete heel and um, I just added a little bit of straight knitting on top and I still have to go a bit further until I reach the point where I do have to do the calf increases. Yeah, so not much happened on these but I did do a little bit. Same goes for the same for the next sock. That's the uh, Madeline sock, which was the round six pattern for the sock madness. And again, I did not do a lot on it. This is the leg of the sock. This is where the afterport heel will be added. And I think I probably just added something like ten rounds. So I think last week I was round about here, and I just added a little bit. I do have to get a move on with these, but this is a sock where I have to really look at the pattern the whole time. I have to concentrate on the numbers. Um, so I can knit these when I watch TV and it's not very interesting, especially. So the perfect thing to do is knit on these while my husband watches football. <laughs> but, um, or something where people mainly talk, I can knit on these. But if it's an interesting movie 
um, or exciting or something that I it's not good to knit on these I um, tend to either put mistakes in or miss the movie so yeah but I hope to put some more, more work in on these socks soon then I cast on a new pair of socks and that's my new cast on for this week and I am knitting a pair of spiral socks um, I'm pretty sure you all know what spiral socks are they um, use a knit per pattern that spirals around the sock and the thing about these socks is that you don't have to knit a heel because the sock will just um, adapt to the foot it's probably not the right word but um, the unusual thing about this spiral sock, I've knit quite a few spiral socks in the past, but I am, I'm not using a sock yarn, but I am using a pure alpaca yarn by Hansa Farm. And this is actually their alpaca yarn, which is the first pure alpaca machine washable yarn. I think there is, at least it's the first that they have come up with. So this is a pure alpaca yarn. It's very soft very nice and I would not usually recommend using it for socks because I think if you run around in these socks they will probably wear through very quickly but I am knitting these socks as bed socks um, for my grandmother-in-law so my husband's grandmother I knit a pair of socks for her if you've um, watched the podcast for a longer time Last year I knit her a pair of alpaca socks um, for Christmas and I knit normal socks and I knew her shoe size and I sort of knit the normal size for her shoe size but they were too small but they weren't too short but they were too narrow because um, she's had quite a few problems with her feet and her ankles are I don't think they're, they're actually swollen a lot, but um, because of the problems she's had with her um, ankle, um, the bones are not the way they should be. I don't know how to explain it. it. They're just a bit bigger than they used to be, and the socks were too tight, and she couldn't wear them. And I promised to do another pair, and I completely forgot about it. And then last week, I was reminded of it, and I decided to cast on at once so I can't forget again and um, I decided to cast on a lot more stitches than I did with the last one but I wanted to knit a rib pattern so they weren't too wide on that part of her um, foot and leg that aren't as big and then I decided to do a spiral sock because then I don't have to bother about a heel and she doesn't have to bother about the heel when she puts the socks on she can just put them on any way she likes and um, I don't have to worry about the size being the right one because if you stretch the sock wide um, like this, they get a bit shorter and it can be really difficult to get the heel placement right if the foot isn't like the normal shape. And I thought a spiral sock might just be perfect because it'll, um, yeah, it'll just uh, mold to her foot in a way yeah so that's what I'm doing so this is a DK weight yarn so normally I would knit with either 48 or 52 stitches but for this one I cast on 60 stitches so it really stretches quite wide but because of the rip nature of the pattern it also shrinks again and I hope it'll be perfect um, normally for a normal or for a shoe size a smaller shoe size I would say that 50 grams is enough for one sock but because I'm us using so many stitches um, I, I'm not quite sure and I don't want the socks to be too short because I want her to have really warm feet when she's lying in bed or maybe even sitting on her sofa and not moving a lot. Um, I am thinking of just knitting the whole ball of yarn into this pattern and then doing the toe of the sock in a contrast color. Not 100% sure, depends on how far the yarn goes. And if I feel the sock is going to be too long, I might stick with this color. But if I feel like um, she can do with the extra length, I might do um, the toe in a contrast color, probably black, um, to make it 
less obvious. But I'd still like to be able to show um, exactly how far you get with one ball of yarn. So that's the plan for these. Um, yeah, so that's all the socks. Then um, I will go on with the other sock yarn projects that aren't socks. And the first one I'm going to show you is the Town Square Shawl by Romy. Um, that is a triangular shawl, but instead of starting on a small point in the neck and then increasing, you cast on stitches um, along the top of the shawl. And because of the lace pattern, you get these nice you get this nice scalloped edge, which I think is really nice. And I've added quite a few rows to this main part of the shawl. Um, the pattern itself is fairly easy. So when I'm in the main body, I can mostly knit without looking at the pattern, but I do have to always look at the pattern for the edge. I can't um, quite remember those. I think it's 24 rows. 24 rows that repeat so it's 12 different um, pattern rows and they are quite similar but not the same so um, I, I'm not really bothering to try and learn it by heart I just look at the pattern every time um, so this is the edge of the triangle so these are the stitches that I'm not knitting at the moment because I'm knitting short rows and so these are stitches I'm not knitting at the moment. I will pick them up again when I knit the border pattern and um, right now. So so the number of stitches I'm knitting are decreasing and um, yeah. So this is what it looks like at the moment. And I enjoy knitting on it. I enjoy the yarn. It's Opal subscription yarn. I'm knitting this pattern as part of the pattern battle over on Ravelry um, and I have already knit quite a bit of my first ball of yarn and the only reason I can knit this pattern is because I uh, swapped two of my subscription yarns with a friend who gave me this one and the red one and I don't know what to do with that color yet. Yeah so that's that. Then I did quite a bit of work on my glacier tunic or dress and that's the one where I am planning on knitting five different colors into one garment and this is the color one and last week I was knitting on color two and I was somewhere around here and I finally sat down and put on put in a long cable um, onto the stitches so I could lay it out flat I tried it on I measured everything and I tried to measure how long I want the dress to be and I decided on a number of rows that I want to do for every color uh, from here on and then I started uh, fading in the, the third color so this section is the mix between color two and three it's not very obvious it's just that the the number three color this is this is color number three. It um, changes between the lighter and the darker blue, whereas color number two is mainly the lighter blues. Um, so at some points you, you see the darker blue of color three, but then at some points um, where it's light, you, can, you can't really tell the difference between color two and three. But now I completely finished with color two and I'm on to color three. And now I have to knit, um, I want to knit, I think, six of these garter stripes for every color. And then it's two garter stripes um, for the mix of the colors. And yeah, and the number of stitches is increasing. It's, it's um, a slight A-line shape in the dress. I hope that I'm increasing enough stitches by the time I get to the hip so that it will be wide enough but I think it will because I'm still fairly high on the side of the pullover it's just the front and back that already um, go down quite low yeah so this is the first ball of yarn of color three that I've used and after I finished the sleeves I weighed it and I used almost exactly 50 grams for the sleeves I think it was 49 grams so I have like 
almost exactly have a ball of yarn for the front and back and I have no idea how far I'm going to get with it but I do have a second one so I can um, yeah I can do all the rows that I calculated that I want to do um, without having to worry about the yarn yeah so that's that then I worked on the children's oh the glacier tunic is a pattern by Hori Lucatelli as is the children's sweater that I'm knitting at the moment that's the heartstring pattern it was part of the heart on my sleeve pattern collection um, that was available a, a, a few years ago I think and all the pullovers in that ebook have a button-up construction have the same um, gauge and I am knitting the four to six year old size and I finished both the sleeves I think I knit them a few one or two centimeters longer than the pattern calls for because I've got to measure but I thought kids grow so quickly I just left it that way if the sleeves are too long at the moment the little guy's only three anyway so it's supposed to be a bit too big but she can just roll the sleeve up and it'll just fit that much longer I'm using Opal three ply sock yarn in two different colors so this is one of the colors and this is the other color and I'm holding them together to come up with this new color and my sister is knitting the pullover for the little brother and she's using this color combined with uh, another color and every week I plan to get out one of those balls to show you and every week I forget we'll see about Maybe next week I'll remember it. <laughs> so after finishing the sleeves, I cast on for the front and back. Um, I'm working exactly according to the pattern as the boys are nowhere near me. I can't measure them and I just hope the pullover is going to fit. So now I have a lot more stitches than I had on the sleeves and the colors come out differently again. But I think it looks quite nice. And yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, knitting the the yoke <laughs> because then I'll be on the um, yeah I'll be almost finished. But right now I'm just knitting round and round and round, no shaping for the kids um, front and back. And so this is the perfect TV knitting when the movie gets exciting. And I really want to pay attention. Yeah, and then the last garment I am going to show you is the crochet invested vest. I am crocheting from a pattern by Heather from HGDC, HG Designs Crochet. She doesn't sell her patterns on Ravelry. And even though I link to my pattern page on Ravelry, I also link to Heather's um, own page internet page and that's where you can get the pattern and should you get the pattern through my link um, I'll get a little percentage of the pattern price even though you don't have to pay any more so it's an affiliate link I just want to make sure I mention that so this is as usual with Heather it's a granny square garment and at the moment I'm collecting all my granny squares in this crochet something I crocheted this uh, I think two or three weeks ago I never showed it because it was just a little um, experiment this is a new yarn that I ordered it's another acrylic yarn um, that I think is perfect for, for like little bowls or blankets or um, toys things like that and at first I wanted to make a hat but then I didn't like the material for a hat so much so I decided to just leave it I, I did a few decreases I think even unintentionally and I decided I can I can just collect things in it and it seemed a great place to keep all the granny squares and granny triangles so um, last week I um, I'm not sure whether I added any more of the squares or whether I had done them before I can't remember but I definitely did the triangles last week and now I have enough pieces to do the 
smaller size, not the smallest size, but um, I'm, I'm kind of in between two sizes and I wasn't quite sure which size to make. So right now I have, I think, one or two pieces too many for the smaller size and two pieces too few for, this, for the bigger size. So I thought what I'm going to do is I'm going to start crocheting those pieces together as if I was going to do the smaller size and then I will try it on. And then if I think it's too tight, I can still add one column of squares and I can do the, 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 the bigger size because the difference between the two sizes that I'm in between of is um, one column of, of squares. So both sizes have, the front is four um, granny squares wide, but the back can either be three or four squares wide. And as I said, I don't know which size I want to have. And because all the pieces will get another round around them in the dark blue, um, it's difficult to um, to measure just from these pieces how how wide the things are going to be, and I I'm still I haven't um, done two pieces that are exactly the same, so I have four different colors, five different colors that I'm using, but the dark blue right now is only in the middle, and all the last rounds will be dark blue, and then in between the dark blues I will have I have white gray light pink and a bit of a darker pink and even if two pieces use the same colors then the um, the uh, the placement will be different so those two pieces have the same use the same colors but here the white is in between here the white is on the outside and this has the same colors but again the um, the placement of the colors is different. Yeah, so I'm hoping to manage to do the, or at least start with the crocheting together of the pieces this coming week and we'll see how far I get and what size I end up doing. Then on to the knit alongs and I finished my dishcloth. So we're doing a dishcloth knit along over on my Ravelry group and with this YouTube channel and the German YouTube channel. And this is the Flip It dishcloth. Um, wasn't quite sure about the pattern name last week, but that's what it's called. So you knit two triangles with the same pattern. So these two sides are the same. And, oh no, that's the side that I just showed you. <laughs> and these two sides are the same, but then when once you finish knitting the um, triangles you flip one over and then you either knit or sew it together I knit it together with a Kitchener stitch and um, and then you have one half with the right side and one with the wrong side on both sides the pattern didn't have any hangers um, included in the pattern so I just improvised um, a crochet hanger in both in either color so I have one on this side and one on that side and I really like it I like um, the look of it and I like the size and maybe I'll make more of that pattern in different colors we'll see haven't started another one yet but happy to have finished that and the last knit along that we are running here is the optic blanket and the optic blanket is knit out of squares and basically you can knit all the squares of the blanket onto each other then you don't have to sew anything but I want a fairly big blanket and I found that having a huge big project on your lap while you're knitting and moving it around all the time is not so easy so I decided to finish after I knit nine squares together then I started the next and I started the next and last time I showed you the three finished nine square squares and this week or last week I knit the first square of the next nine square square how often can you say square and this is it and for this square I dis I'm going to go for uh, solid colors as the contrast colors um, with the other ones I did I use the the usual opal colorful yarns 
combine it with the black but now I'm going to use some solid colors and this is the brightest of all the colors that I've um, that I'm planning on using and I thought it just I just wanted to see what this looks like by itself and I think it's it's quite crazy and quite funny and I like it a lot and um, yeah but now I can't wait to put the next color next to it and see what that looks like yeah this is Opal DK weight sock yarn by yeah Opal <laughs> <laughs> as uh, all the yarns in this blanket are DK weight sock yarns they're not all by Opal but most of them are yeah so that was everything I knit and crocheted last week almost everything I'm actually working on a few um, projects I'm not showing you right now uh, but I'll talk about them next week and show them the week after but this is everything I wanted to show you this week. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.